What if Qui-Gon Jinn trained Anakin Skywalker even after his death? As a Force ghost, that's what we're going to explore today, and we're going to start with Qui-Gon kind of discovering this path for himself. So, let's get right into it. I hope you guys enjoy. Please do leave a like, and let's go. Weeks before Anakin Skywalker was ever discovered, Qui-Gon Jinn was off on a spiritual exploration into the Force. Something called to him. He could hear it. Something stirred in the Force, and he could almost see it. For years, Qui-Gon felt something in the light side of the Force calling to him. But today was different. The call was strong, and Qui-Gon flew along through space, letting the Force guide him until he finally arrived at some strange, ancient-looking planet. But it looked less like a planet and more like some ancient architecture. And Qui-Gon flew towards it. His entire vision began to go white. He was completely out. And eventually, Qui-Gon woke up on a beautiful planet with no idea where he was. But Qui-Gon knew that this was the will of the Force, and he explored this planet. He could feel its strong presence in the Force, both the light and the dark coming together to form a balance. Qui-Gon walked along for a while, until night came and he reached a cave. He decided to spend the night here, as a storm was beginning to really come down outside. And once inside the cave, Qui-Gon fell asleep still unsure of where he was. And after some time asleep, he awoke to a voice. In front of Qui-Gon stood a man, long, messy hair, and a gentle smile. But the man suddenly turned angry, eyes yellow, snarling on his face, and the man flickered to some sort of dark machine with labored breathing. One side of the cave was now light and happy, while the other side was dark and angry. Qui-Gon ignited his lightsaber, asking what was going on, and two new voices emerged, a man and a woman, both of them seeming to circle the room until the gentle voice of the woman resided in the light side of the cave and the man who went to the dark side of it. The two spoke in unison, telling Qui-Gon that his path in life was greater than he ever could have imagined. The voices told Qui-Gon that darkness was returning to the galaxy, it would poison the Jedi and the Republic, and it threatens to destroy the balance of the Force. The man sounded happy about this, while the woman seemed to dread it. Qui-Gon didn't understand. This darkness, what could it be? And the two voices continued on, saying that Qui-Gon must bear the responsibility of being the counter to this darkness. And the voices began repeating the same phrase over and over again. Train the boy. As Qui-Gon listened to the voices, he looked to the light side of the cave, his Padawan, Obi-Wan, smiling and laughing with the long-haired man from the center of the room. Then, Qui-Gon turned to the dark side of the room and saw Obi-Wan again, crying, screaming below as the long-haired boy burned and flickered into the machine of darkness. Qui-Gon put his lightsaber away and got onto his knees, closing his eyes. He reached into the Force saying that he would accept this mission, and the gods of Mortis would come to Qui-Gon now, sending him through his spiritual journey to learn to become a Force Spirit after death. Days later, Qui-Gon returned to the Jedi Temple to find Obi-Wan looking for him in his quarters. Qui-Gon remembered Obi-Wan in his visions on Mortis. Grown up, wise, but he had to go through so much. Obi-Wan told Qui-Gon that they'd been assigned a mission together, they are to go to Naboo and negotiate with the Trade Federation. And this, their journey began. Days later, Qui-Gon would find Anakin Skywalker. He knew that this was the boy that he must train. He could not tell the Jedi Council about his experience in the Force. They would think he'd gone mad. But he knew how important this boy really was. And even later now, Qui-Gon found himself alone in a room locking lightsabers with what he knew to be a Sith Lord. The darkness had truly returned. Obi-Wan was watching from behind a ray shield door as this Sith knocked Qui-Gon's lightsaber away, then stabbed the Jedi Master through the spine. Qui-Gon lay on the floor, and he could feel his life fading. But he knew now that this was what his destiny was. He must transcend this physical life, become one with the Force, train the boy. Obi-Wan ended up killing the Sith and holding Qui-Gon in his arms. Qui-Gon looked at Obi-Wan and simply said, I will always be with you. 
and then he died. Days later, in the Jedi Temple, Grand Master Yoda paced in front of Obi-Wan Kenobi, who had just become a Jedi Knight. Obi-Wan was insisting that he train Anakin Skywalker. Qui-Gon never made Obi-Wan promise to train him, but Obi-Wan felt he owed it to his fallen master. Yoda was frustrated and was about to allow it when they both felt a familiar presence in the Force. At once, both of them exclaimed, Qui-Gon, as his body manifested here and now in this room. Both Jedi were in shock. Yoda, 900 years old, was just as surprised as Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon smiled before he began to explain everything. The Force had called to him to be part of a greater service than he'd ever expected. Qui-Gon said this was to combat a growing darkness, and to fulfill his destiny, he will help Obi-Wan train the boy. Yoda didn't know what to say. He felt like a youngling learning about the Force for the first time. But he accepted this, permitting Obi-Wan to take Anakin as his Padawan, while Qui-Gon guide the two of them. And this must be kept as a secret from everyone else. The less the Jedi know about this, the less of a chance the Sith will find out the Jedi can live eternally. Obi-Wan would begin his training with Anakin, and after five years of training with Qui-Gon guiding Obi-Wan, Anakin was strong enough in the Force to see Qui-Gon. Fifteen-year-old Anakin was in a sparring match with a hologram of Darth Maul, and he kept losing. Frustrated, Anakin took a break into the meditation room when he began to feel something. The first Jedi he ever met, Qui-Gon, began to speak to Anakin, and Anakin opened himself to it. Qui-Gon explained how Anakin could master battle meditation, and how staying calm in battle is how to beat dark side warriors like Maul. Qui-Gon talked to Anakin about calming his emotions in battle for a bit longer, and soon Anakin emerged back into the sparring room. Anakin fought the hologram from Maul, beating it for the first time, and he smiled at Obi-Wan. His master was proud, and now both he and Qui-Gon could train him together. Years later, Anakin sat alone again in the meditation room of the Jedi Temple. He reached out to Qui-Gon, asking for guidance in this moment. Anakin had just been assigned his first mission by himself, and it was to protect Senator Padme Amidala as she made her way back to Naboo. Qui-Gon came to Anakin, and Anakin explained what he was feeling. He had an attachment to Padme, and he was also having dreams about his mother. Anakin knew that both of these paths were not the Jedi way, but he simply could not help himself. Qui-Gon spoke now, saying that he must own these feelings. They must be part of you, an extension of you, he told Anakin. If you fight it, they will win. Feel. Don't think. Use your instincts, he told him. The one thing that Anakin didn't love about Qui-Gon as a Force spirit was he could never truly outright tell Anakin what to do. It was against the laws of the Force. He could only guide him, sway him in the right direction. And as soon as Padme and Anakin landed on Naboo, Anakin explained that he had to go elsewhere. Anakin told Padme that his mother was in danger. She needed him, and Padme said they can take her ship. Together, they took off for Tatooine, where Anakin found his mother's new family and learned she'd been taken by the Tuscans. Anakin took his speeder deep into the Junlin wastes until he eventually found the Tuscan camp. Sneaking from tent to tent, Anakin found his mother. She was injured, but he'd got here just in time. She was definitely still alive. Anakin had to get her out of here, away from these savages, but it would be difficult to sneak her out of here. Anakin knew how he could open up a pathway. He left through the opening of the tent and ignited his lightsaber. He could feel Qui-Gon begin to appear, but Anakin cut himself off, feeling only anger, rage, and pain for what the Tuscans did to his mother. And he slaughtered them, not just the men, but the women, and the children too. And when it was finished, Anakin took his unconscious mother back home. She was alive, and to Anakin she was alive because he didn't hold back. He did what had to be done to save her. Inside the Jedi Temple, Yoda was meditating in his chambers as Qui-Gon came to him. Yoda could feel something wrong with Anakin, and Qui-Gon told Yoda that Anakin had taken a dark path today. The darkness surrounding the Jedi was making its mark on him, 
and he told Yoda that Anakin must open himself back up to it. And Yoda said to have faith. Anakin will need Qui-Gon in the end. Even after transcending into the Force, Yoda still could teach Qui-Gon sometimes. But as time went on, Qui-Gon had a harder and harder time reaching Anakin, or really reaching any of the Jedi. The Clone Wars began, and with the Clone Wars, a new wave of darkness blanketed the galaxy. Jedi dying in fights they never expected to be in, the planets in the galaxy fearing every new day could be their last, and the Sith controlling it all from the top. The Sith had grown so powerful in secret that Qui-Gon could barely see and watch over Anakin in the light side. The Clone Wars would go on for three years, Jedi falling further from who they are supposed to be, the galaxy in need of a beacon of hope. And for the Republic, those beacons were Chancellor Palpatine and Anakin Skywalker. For Palpatine, this war was going excellently. Anakin was a hero for the Republic, and his eventual turn against the Jedi would turn everyone against the Jedi. But there was something hidden in the Force, something that always surrounded Anakin that Palpatine truly feared. It was familiar, but Palpatine could never put his finger on it. Nonetheless, today was a pivotal day. Palpatine sat prisoner in a chair aboard the Invisible Hand, Grievous' ship. His apprentice, Count Dooku, had just left the room as Anakin and Obi-Wan were about to arrive. Today, Palpatine thought to himself, he would have Anakin kill Dooku and his path into the darkness would be sealed. And soon after, Anakin would begin to battle with Dooku in a duel of the fates. Obi-Wan lay unconscious, and Dooku taunted Anakin until Anakin gave in to the dark side launching an all-out assault on Dooku. The duel did not last much longer, and before long Anakin stood with his lightsabers in an X formation across Dooku's neck. Palpatine spat the words, do it, and Anakin was about to when he felt something else. Qui-Gon had been unable to reach Anakin since the night at the Tusken camp, but something changed today. As Anakin was about to kill Dooku, he opened himself to the Force. On the surface, he was a warrior, and he just defeated Dooku, but inside, he was afraid, sad, unsure of what to do. He knew this was the dark path, and so he let Qui-Gon back in right now. And Qui-Gon came only as a voice, telling Anakin to concentrate on the moment, to look down at Dooku, unarmed and unthreatening. Qui-Gon told Anakin that if he does this, he will accept the dark path again, and it will cost him. Palpatine could feel this presence, and he again told Anakin to do it, but Anakin put his lightsabers away, embracing the light side. Palpatine was genuinely shocked, and he asked Anakin what happened. Anakin simply said he remembered an old friend, lifting Dooku up with the handcuffs. They escaped off the ship together with Obi-Wan, and on Coruscant, Anakin presented Dooku to the Coruscant security, where he was then arrested. Palpatine sat in his office for the next few nights, focusing on two things. He dove deep into Sith alchemy, sending dreams to Anakin through the force of Padme dying. He refused to kill Dooku, but these dreams would send him over the edge. And his other task was the execution of Count Dooku. He was being allowed to talk in the Senate tomorrow, and Palpatine simply could not allow that. He hired 10 bounty hunters, giving them Coruscant Guard clone armor, and the 10 hunters infiltrated the Coruscant prison finding Dooku and firing everything they had at him. He was dead, and the hunters made their escape, and Anakin Skywalker woke up in a sweat. Nightmares were back, but not about his mother this time. No, they were about Padme. Anakin spent the night promising to himself that he would never let these dreams come true. And in the morning, Anakin meditated, seeking guidance once again. Qui-Gon came to him, and Anakin explained the dreams asking Qui-Gon for help, and Qui-Gon told Anakin that these dreams, like those about his mother, could be prevented as long as Anakin stays on course, doing what is best. Qui-Gon told Anakin that he has been a great Padawan, even through the Clone Wars. He has stayed strong, and the end is near where Anakin must make a choice. And Qui-Gon was right, as some time later, Anakin stood alone inside of the council chambers. Just moments ago, Palpatine had revealed the truth to Anakin. He was the Sith Lord, 
and Palpatine said that Padme could only be saved through the dark side. Windu had sent Anakin to the council, and now he felt stuck. He had to do something, and Qui-Gon spoke to him faintly, telling Anakin to trust his instincts, to do what he must, make the right choice, and Anakin left the chambers, flying over to the Chancellor's office. Anakin ran in to find Mace Windu defending against Sith Lightning, and Palpatine could sense the conflict within Anakin. This was not good. He needs to be further in the dark side. Palpatine used his full rage now to destroy Windu's lightsaber, engulfing the Jedi Master in lightning, burning him where he stood. Both Windu and Palpatine were yelling at Anakin to choose, and Anakin thought about the light side, how every time Qui-Gon came to him, things worked out in his favor. And now, Anakin chose. As Palpatine was about to throw Windu out into the Coruscant sky, his hands were chopped off by Anakin. Then Anakin spun his saber and stabbed it into the Sith Lord's chest. Palpatine died right here, and as he did, he swore he saw a flicker of Qui-Gon Jinn in the corner. Windu got up, thanking Anakin, and they made their way back to the Jedi Temple. In time, Anakin Skywalker was made a Jedi Master, and was allowed to keep his seat on the Council. As Palpatine died, so did the Nightmares, and Anakin was with Padme, as she safely gave birth to the Twins. The galaxy recovered from war with the Chancellor Mon Mothma at the helm, welcoming the Jedi and clones into the peaceful rebuilding galaxy. And Anakin Skywalker, Jedi Master, husband and father, was the hero of it all, thanks to Qui-Gon Jinn. Folks, let me know what you thought of this one today. That's where we end. I hope you enjoyed. Once again, please do leave a like. That helps so much. So, thanks. Alright, appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.